Ready to share your work with the world? Let's find out how to prepare your files so that they always look their best. Sharpening is one of the best and worst things that can be done to any photographic image. Why do I say that? Applied correctly, sharpening can make an image sing. Done poorly, however, and it can wreck your image beyond repair. Let's see how to do this the right way. Let's go to our Chapter 15 folder and open up the file Sharpen. I'm going to press the F key to take us into full screen mode with menu bar and let's zoom in to 100%. That's Command 1 on the Mac, Control 1 on the PC. And to select our sharpening tool, we'll go to the filter menu, down to Sharpen, and we're going to choose Smart Sharpen. Right away, you'll notice that we've got a great preview box in Smart Sharpen, and this allows us to have two views of the image at the same time. I can click in this preview box and drag it anywhere I want in the image. I'm going to move this over here so we can see some hair on the horse. And I'm going to go in my image window and hold down the space bar key and move this so I can see his eye. Now, two things I want to point out before we get started. Software sharpening is just a visual trick. All we're going to be doing is increasing the contrast along edges. So we can't magically refocus an image. That means two things. One, you want to be fairly conservative with your sharpening. And two, you want to judge your results by looking at the image at 100% on screen and by viewing a part of the image that is sharp. So this is a great area to look at, as is this, but we don't want to start sharpening and try to sharpen this guy who's purposely out of focus, okay? So make sure that you've got a sharp area of the image in view. Now moving to our Smart Sharpen dialog, we have Amount and Radius controls. Amount is our basic volume control. Do we want a lot of sharpening or a little bit? Radius lets us decide how far from the edge our sharpening effect is going to spill out. What's an edge, you ask? An edge is simply where dark pixels butt up against light pixels. Now let's take a look at this. Now right now we've got an amount of 100 and a radius of 1, and let's see what change that's made to our image. If I turn off this preview box, you can see in the image document window, there's with no sharpening, there's with some sharpening. You might have noticed there's no change here in this preview box. To see the before and after here, you simply move your hand anywhere in this preview box, click, and hold down the mouse. That's our before view. And let it go. And there's our after. So already we can see at this default setting, we've got some sharpening going on. Let's increase this a bit because I want to show you what amount and radius do. If we set a high amount here and a high radius, we quickly have an oversharpened mess. Now, while I'm not going to be able to give you magic numbers that will work for every single image, I can tell you this. When you set a high amount, you are going to want a low radius and vice versa. You're not going to have a need 99.9% .9 of the time to be dragging amount and radius, either both, all the way to the right or all the way to the left. So you want to sort of play these two off of each other. There's a couple of other options here that are important. Next to remove, you want to click on this pull down and make sure you select lens blur. That is going to be the most realistic and precise algorithm for sharpening these pixels. Also, make sure you turn on this more accurate checkbox. If you have an older computer, this may slow you down a bit, but this ensures that what you see in the preview box is what you're going to get once you hit the OK button. We don't want any nasty surprises there. Let's go and set this to a more realistic result. I'm going to come down some here on the amount, and I'm going to come down significantly on the radius. Now let's take a look at our before and after with just the hair on this mane. Here's our before, and there's our after. Not too bad. And let's take a look at the before and after in the eye by turning this preview on and off. I could use the keyboard shortcut here of the letter P to toggle this off and on. There's no sharpening. Here's our sharpening there. Now we're going to move and turn on the advanced radio button here, and this is the magic of Smart Sharpen. So far we've set a global sharpening value that affects the entire image, but now we have shadow and highlight tabs, which means that if I click on shadow, I can independently adjust the sharpening that's applied to the dark areas of the image. 
If I'm happy with the overall sharpening, but I feel that it's getting a little bit overdone in the shadows, I simply drag this fade amount and watch the eye of this horse. As I drag it to the right, the fade amount reduces the sharpening effect. We have a tonal width and we can use this to define what a shadow is. If we drag this to the left, we are narrowly defining shadows. So we're restricting this fade amount to only the darkest areas of the image. If we wanted to expand our definition of a shadow, we could simply drag it to the right and include more tones in that. Here, I'm going to restrict this to more of the darker shadows here. And we have a radius that we can use to even further refine our tonal width. For now, I'm going to leave this at its default of one pixel. And let's go and take a look at the highlights. We can do the same thing here. And I'm going to move this image over just so we can take a look at this stretch right along here. If we felt that our sharpening was a little bit too strong there, we could fade out and soften that up a bit. I think in this case, we're pretty good. I might just come in about 10% right there. Tonal width and radius both look good. And we're going to hit OK to commit to these changes. Now, let's take a look at our before and after here in the history panel. This is the image we started with. And this is Smart Sharpen.